Welcome to this uh, special video where you will watch me compile R from source. So it won't be very exciting, but uh, maybe you'll learn a thing or two, especially if you're on a Linux system. Um, it's, I think what is interesting when you compile R from source is two things. First of all, you can configure it the way you want, so you can activate some flags or deactivate them. But for me, most importantly, is that I can decide where I want R to, to live, uh, which is the main reason I've been compiling from source. But let's let's start and then let's see uh, while it's compiling, I will explain uh, my rationale to you. So I've downloaded the source code. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, so I have R 4.1. So I have this uh, tar.gz file uh, and let's uh, uncompress it so i think that's how you do it always forget uh, the exact flags but i think yeah that seems to be it so let's go now to the inside the folder i are i have currently r uh, so if i if i start r i have r 4.05 uh, so let's uh, yeah let's uh, update that so now I'm inside this folder. Uh, this folder contains a lot of files. What we're going to use is, first of all, we're going to run configure with a set of options and a set of flags. Um, I can use, uh, if I go back to my history, yeah, here it is. So I have, uh, yeah, I should have actually, yeah, I should have valley. Well, so this is not what I want to do uh, because I just need to change the prefix. So if you see, I have all these uh, options. Uh, I'm basically following RStudio's um, tutorial on how to compile R from source, which I, I will link in the description. I've just added some more flags because I've had some trouble with uh, graphics for some reason. Uh, so I've added these flags at the end to, which should be activated by default. But um, yeah. I, I've, I've enabled them explicitly and it seems to work better. So this is now running configure. This will take a little bit of time. This is checking if I have all the dependencies to actually be able to compile R. So it will check whether I have uh, the libraries that you need, if I have uh, the compilers that uh, you need, etc. Um, should work because uh, I compiled the previous version also from source and I guess it's using you know the same compilers and the same libraries. So yeah, actually it's already over, great. So uh, you see that I have, um, so this is where R will be installed. So this is a folder that I, uh, oh, why do I have a 0 0.1? That's that's not what I wanted. Did I, yeah, my mistake, that's not an issue. I can uh, just rerun this and simply reconfigure the thing. Um, so I install R, not from my package manager. So I am on a Linux distribution called OpenSUSE, which is a rolling release distribution, meaning you install it once and then you keep updating it through the, forever. Uh, and you'll always have the latest software available. It's really great. I've been using it for quite a long time now. Uh, very easy to use, um, very, very nice, uh, very, very nice defaults, very nice uh, packages that you can install. And R is one of them. So actually, if I use my um, package manager and if I look for R base, I should find the package R base, which will install uh, the latest version of R. Probably not already R 4.1. I think I can run something like info. Let's see. Maybe it's already been updated, but I don't think so. It always takes one or two days. Yeah, this is still R uh, 405. So I could use this uh, because, as you see, it will be uh, it will probably get updated like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. The reason I don't use this is when I install R from the package manager, a bunch of dependencies get pulled. So I've done a bunch of other default packages get get pulled, which is not uh, a very big issue uh, as such. But this will take some space. And I've had problems with my, so I have a separate partition for my system and I have a partition for my, um, for my, actually, let me, let me run make. So make will, uh, maybe also we need to zoom in a little bit. Make will run the, um, 
will actually compile uh, the thing. Uh, so while I'm talking, this can this can run. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so I've had some trouble with space because I have a separate partition, 30 gigs for the system, and uh, the rest is for my personal files. Now, the issue that I had in the past with OpenSUSE, even though it's a really great distribution, is that um, as I get updating uh, my system, it's getting more and more bloated. So more and more files, uh, more and more packages get downloaded. So after a lot of time, so I think the last time I had to really do a fresh install was maybe something like four years ago. Uh, so in four years, uh, my system partition got full. So I thought, okay, you know what? Uh, all the syst all the things that I up update very often, you know, which always leave, you know, it always leaves so when you update a new package, you, it, the old packages get removed, but you might, you know, the documentation might still stay, or maybe some older libraries might stay, which are orphaned, not really needed anymore by other packages. So you might get these issues. I don't know exactly what's going on, to be fair, but I thought, okay, let me just keep in my system everything I need to, you know, just have a functional computer, but everything I need for my personal use, so R uh, being one of, of, of it, I will install it from, you know, from source or before actually from Anaconda. So I had Anaconda in my home uh, directory. So Anaconda pulled the latest also version of R, latest version of packages, etc. But there also uh, I had some troubles because not everything, not every package was available in the Anaconda repositories. So because the, the Anaconda package manager is really separate from the R package manager. It's really a total different thing. So with, uh, you know, with time, I had to basically mix packages that I installed from within R, compile the, compiling them from source, and packages that I installed using the Anaconda package manager. Basically, it became kind of messy. Uh, I had some problems with versions uh, that some packages needed some versions and some. So I had some kind of of um, of uh, dependency hell, uh, or for Windows that you would call that a DLL hell. But it was with packages. So packages that were. It was really weird, but there, there were some kind of recursive dependencies or circular dependencies between packages that weren't being met. And I thought, okay, you know what? Let me compile it from source. It takes more time, as you see. Uh, it takes a bit of time to compile, but it's not something that I do very often. I do it now because this new version uh, has some pretty cool features. So it has um, now uh, a pipe, uh, a pipe operator, immediately as a as a pay in base. So you you don't need the Magrida pipe anymore. But I think I'll keep using the Magrida pipe. Um, but you have this pipe now natively. You also have a shorthand, a native shorthand for anonymous functions, which is also cool. Um, so this might be something that I might use in the future. So I thought, okay, why not? Uh, why not install it from re update my my R uh, version and make a little video about it? So I'm uh, so this is now compiling. So it takes some time. Uh, I might speed up the video now. And um, yeah, let's just uh, see each, sh each other in uh, a couple of seconds. Seconds for you, but minutes for me. And we're back. So um, there was an error here. Uh, that um, shouldn't be an issue because this is uh, basically one, one font uh, is missing uh, to build the documentation but that doesn't really that's not really an issue so i think this should be okay uh, now let's just uh, finish with uh, make install and uh, let's see if it worked so um, so we're inside the bin folder we have r so if i type uh, this yep we're in r 4.1 so that's that's great um, so now i have two r versions on my computer if i just type r 
I have R, as you can see, 405. And uh, if I explicitly, just as I did before, run the R version that is inside this folder, okay, so this is inside the bin folder, uh, I, this is the executable. If I run it explicitly with dot slash R, this runs R 4.1. So now what I want to do is I want to um, basically run this version whenever I type R instead of R 4.05. Uh, so that's easy enough using something called symbolic links. Um, so first of all, I need to remove the symbolic links. I've already kind of prepared them. Uh, so I'm, oops, that's not what I want to do. Yep, that's what I want to do. Why is this? Here's. Thank you. Do, that's weird. I don't know what's happening with my keyboard. So I use several, so I have a, a very small keyboard. So I have several layers to um, basically do what I, uh, to basically switch from, um, so I don't have, I don't have uh, arrows. So I, I need to use um, a different layer to, to um, basically uh, convert some of my uh, key keys to arrows. So sometimes I have some, uh, some problems, uh, but that's, that's fine. Um, now uh, to basically build to basically build my uh, soft link i just need to provide the correct path so what this is going to do this is going to take the executable in uh, our new folder and it's going to put a shortcut if you want a soft link uh, in linux parlance into this folder and uh, I will do the same with our script because that's quite useful as well. And now we're good. Whenever I type R in my terminal, I do have uh, R 4.1.0. So now what remains to do is uh, install um, R's packages. So I could just simply copy and paste my library uh, from the 4.05 folder to the 4.1 folder. Then I'm not going to do that to show you another trick. So imagine that I want to install, uh, you know, the, the packages I use very often. So the tidyverse, of course, janitor, which I really, which I, I really like. Uh, what else is there? Um, I think with tidyverse, I already covered quite a lot. Um, Use, use this should also be there, but just in case, let's add it explicitly. Um, yeah, let's let's go with that first. So this is, these are my packages, and now there's an option, if I remember correctly, called NCPUs. Is it NCPUs? I think it is. Let's see. Let's say that I want, or maybe 8. Yeah, 8 is okay. Let's see that I want to use NCPUs. So this should, unless I made a mistake, this should install. Um, this should install. And let's take a look. Uh, all these packages and compile them using eight of my CPUs. Actually, instead of htop, let me instead of htop bring up cases guard because I think here I I have a better view of my processes. So I only have one R. Pro so I don't think it's NCPUs. Nope, it's not NCPUs. So let me let me stop. You know what? Let's kill R. Oh, it's still. That's weird. Okay, great. Uh, so I have to Google it. I thought it was NCPUs. Weird. Install packages in parallel. May I am mistaken? So what is the argument? So I have another screen which you don't see, which I'm not recording. Uh, okay, so I didn't remember it being done like that, but I guess, no, that's not it. So uh, apparently it's a global option that you have to Really? That's weird. Or is it... 
Nah. I think inside packages, I don't think you need to change the global option. I think it's N CPUs, but with a big, a big N. Let's see. I think... Oh, it's still only one process. Weird. Uh, so it seems that you need to change the global option. Really? So there's a global option called NCPUs. Oh, no, there, there they are. There they are. Look at that. Beautiful. So if you look at my... Uh, yeah, look at my CPUs. They are uh, all working over time. Beautiful. Look at this. So it's actually, it is NCPUs, but with a capital N and not with um, a, uh, a, a small N. So this is now compiling these packages in parallel. So that's great. It runs relatively fast, much faster, of course. Well, eight times as fast. Well, almost eight times, I guess there's some overhead but almost eight times as fast as if you were running it uh, just using one core. So um, so that's why I don't really mind. I mean, it doesn't really take much time. While it's doing this, I, I do something else. I mean, it's not a big, a big issue. And um, yeah, the advantage also is that um, you could, I'm not doing it, but I guess you could tweak the compilation of the packages uh, as, as I did for R and... Uh, if they, they if they are uh, if they depend on some libraries you could perhaps pinpoint them to more performant libraries so if you have an intel's M mkl library for for math i guess you could uh, probably tweak the installation of these packages to use mkl instead of the um, i think it's blast that is uh, there's some some blast implementation that is uh, included with r anyway um yeah so as i said this is a special video uh, because uh, I don't think many people compile R from source but if you do maybe you learn a thing or two if you don't I still hope uh, you enjoyed and um, yeah so see you next time and uh, stay safe most importantly bye